All right, everyone, Dave here with another exciting tutorial, and today I'll be talking about nodes versus layers. Okay, some programs are layer-based, some programs are node-based, but what the heck is a node? Okay, so I'm gonna be kind of showing what a node is um, conceptually, and then also I'll show some programs that use nodes, um, talk about some programs that use layers, and then just kind of what the heck is the difference and why you'd want to do it. Well, I'm in Photoshop right now, and I'm gonna to jump to um, an image. So if I go to this image here, now Photoshop is a layer-based program. I feel like when it's layer-based, it's kind of intuitive, if you will, meaning that it just seems like it makes sense in how it's there, um, kind of this linear approach. So for example, you can see here's my history. So if I did something to this, let's say if I made this black and white. So I'd go image adjustment, uh, black and white. Okay, great. I made it black and white and you can see that that happened there now let's say if i want to flip it horizontal okay i can do that and let's say i wanted to invert it so um invert there we go and i can see that in my history um the first thing i did was made it black and white then i made it flipped it horizontal then i inverted it and all of those things are kind of relying on one another and there's a particular history or order that I did things okay mm -hmm. this is very common to a layer-based system it kind of matters what order you do it and everything kind of relies on that but if I take a node approach this is what a node approach would look like so pretend we had um, this thing we'll call a machine that makes it black and white but instead of calling it a machine we're gonna call it a node then I also have a flip node and an invert node. Now, of course, Photoshop doesn't really have this, but I'm, I'm just kind of demonstrating a point here. So if I come over here and if I connected the black and white node to the image, I can see that it turns it black and white. Then if I connect the flip node to the image, you probably guess what happens. Aha, yes, it flipped it. And I can see that it's also black and white because black and white is still connected. If I flip, if I connect the invert node, it'll invert it as well. So you can see that all of this makes a difference, but this is kind of a non-linear approach, meaning that if I disconnected the flip node, I can still see that the black and white and the invert node are connected. And I could have as many nodes as I wanted connected to this. Now maybe we're saying, well, Dave, what the heck? This doesn't make any sense. Photoshop doesn't run this way. Well, this is just trying to illustrate an, a concept because a lot of programs have this type of stuff. So let's take a look at Maya, for example. So this uh, 3D modeling program, I feel like here's that motorcycle and it looks weird in the viewport here, but I'm just gonna kind of go and um, we can see it here. Now, if I click on this, I can see that it's material. Okay, so the material that makes up this object right here, I can see that there's a file plugged into here to roughness. I can see there's a file plugged into bump mapping. Oh, there's a couple other files here. Are there other files? Well, let me go ahead and open all these menus. And this is kind of a layered approach where you could kind of picture all of these as layers. And um, now I can put them in any order, so it's not true layer approach, but it's you can see how kind of difficult it could be to figure out how many files do I have connected here. Well, if I go to the hypershade, and I can click on this to go to the hypershade, this is what the hypershade looks like. And if I click on, let's say, frame material, that's what I was just looking at, and if I click on input output connections, I get this graph. So what this graph is, is this is the material indicating what's here, and these are the files that are plugged into the material. These would be considered nodes. In fact, all of these kind of things, including this, all would be considered a node. And I can see that if I look at this a little bit closer, that base color is plugged into base color of the material. And right away, we can say that these gray squares, these are my textures. Remember when I was looking at it this way, I'm like, each one of these represents a texture. I'm like, how many textures do I have applied? Well, and I'd have to open all these menus. You can see how sloppy that gets. Like, uh, now I lost count and I'm so lost. What the heck is going on? We're here at a simple glance I can see that, oh, I've got four textures applied to this material. 
so I can see these nodes. I could disconnect them or I could connect them just by kind of going like that. So if I click on this, I can hit delete to disconnect. But what's cool is I didn't lose this node and then come here and connect it. Other programs like if we look at Substance Designer, okay, Substance Designer is all node based. And I'm just going to kind of look at this color as a simple example. I can see here's this cube here. It's red because think about this as the material of the cube. But if I plug this one in, it turns blue. That's because blue is feeding into the material. But what's neat is I did not lose my red node. Let's say this was a very complicated set of instructions that I wasn't sure if I was going to use. As long as it's not connected, it's not going to be used. But as soon as I connect it, now it's being used. And I can see that this one, I didn't have to delete this one. I also could kind of go in any order. So let's say if I was connecting to the, some of these other things here, I could do that first and then I could connect this later. It doesn't really matter what order I work. Where if I'm working on a layer base system, it would make a difference. Okay, so I feel like um, that is, hopefully that kind of demystifies what a node is. And if we think about it as kind of a, a something like this. Now, a node could be a color, it could be a file, it could be um, a set of instructions, it could be kind of any complex thing or even a simple thing. And because there's so many kind of possibilities, they had to come up with a name of this idea of a node is, is the name that they came up with. And again, I think we hear that a lot and there's a lot of confusion around it, but I think if you think about this example here, um, hopefully this helps add some clarification.